You're listening to Empire of Rust, the world's first and only Transformers RPG podcast. Join the heroes of Icon as they defend Cybertronian civilization from the remnants of Cybertron First to Lord Starscream's egotistical leadership and beyond to the unknown threats on the other side of distant stars. Welcome back to Empire of Rust, the first and greatest Transformers RPG podcast. And this is episode 97, 97? Yeah, 97, there we go. We only have three more episodes before our centennial, our 100th episode. Can you believe it? Pat, can you believe that numbers go up sequentially? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty pretty natural progression. Talk about spoon feeding him the lines. <laughs> and all right. Yeah. Oh, for all you listeners, Pat does not appreciate anniversaries at all. <laughs> you aren't excited about episode 100? I just have a, I have my, my number fetishes are different than the ones that are divisible by 50 or 10 or fi- like, you know, it's just like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, all, all, all of them are arbitrary. So it's just like, I, he'll, he'll be more excited at episode 101. Yes. Honestly, I would, you know. <laughs> I was just going to ask, like, if you could pick one episode to be, like, the big anniversary app, which one would it be? Would it be one-on-one? I mean, that's the next one that's coming up. I mean, after that, I'm not really sure. I mean, we can't use, like, Belgamer's Prime because that's just too fucking big, but uh, that's a good prime number. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is. It's, it's it's one with 13 zeros, 666, 13 zeros, and a one. It's like a palindromic prime, and it's got both 13 and 666 <laughs> in it. So, <laughs> Belgaburn was the name of a demon, so they were like, this number is unholy. And I'm like, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> the great, it's the great-grandfather of the beast. <laughs> I love it. We're going to have to have a special episode for that. Maybe the last episode of the series will be numbered that. <laughs> Belgamer's Prime, yeah. And no one's going to remember what the, the reference is. What? what? What are these talking about? Like, okay, It'll these just guys be are Mike, pro- 90 years old, talking to a bunch of holograms of us. Yeah. <laughs> these, like, these guys are proper nerds. It's like, I know, right? Seriously. <laughs> it's funny you think I'm going to survive that long. Pat will make sure of it. I mean, you you joke, but... Joke. I'm privy to your schemes. I know. I, I talked to pretty much everybody about them. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of thinking, like, all right, you know, we, we, we're we almost at 100 episodes on this. Like, how does that, like, translate to, like, an actual game that you, you play just, you know, just normally, not one that you're going to do, uh, like, a podcast for? Has there ever been, it's like, a, a game where you guys have played and it was, like, 100 sessions long? Did that ever happen to anyone? Probably, because but we don't count it when we're not when we're not yeah. podcasting. <laughs> I am, uh, so we would never know. <laughs> Other than this, I've never ever not once thought about like how many sessions. Like, oh, it's number seven. We got to do something special today, guys. No, it's just like try not to be an asshole every session. Fail <laughs> every session. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have. It's a game I play Tuesday nights online and when i take notes i started at some point i started numbering the sessions mm-hmm. uh, we're playing pathfinder adventure paths so the first one we did was definitely over 100 i forget what the count was and the one i'm currently doing we're a few episodes over 100 now not episodes but sessions right but mm-hmm. so when you play something longer like an adventure path you're definitely going to be up there how often do you play is it like once a week yeah it's like three well two to three hours uh a night it's once a week so that makes sense i mean once a week 52 weeks a year yeah it's two years will get you uh, just over 100 so yeah and i think the the adventure path that's that you ran for for us that lasted what three years three three and a half yeah probably about that so that, that was, was that was well, close to think- 150 episodes i just think Sessions. back to back to our, our our original college days when like Matt and I, we would play like three times a week, sometimes more. <laughs> you know, and, like there was like we didn't have like specific nights. We're like, hey, you want a game tonight? Sure, okay. You know, like you know, that's the, that's the benefit of having a DM that actually doesn't plan anything. Is that you just kind of like happens. 
It's okay. <laughs> when are we playing? We can do it now. <laughs> oh, also, okay. when everyone, everyone lives within like a third of a mile from each other. True. Yeah. That would do it. It's like, we're all going to be sitting here anyway. We might as well bring dice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I think I got some, some interesting plans for, for episode 100 for you folks. I'm still, I'm still wrapping up uh, my, my thoughts on it, but I think I got some cool stuff for everyone. I think you guys are going to like it. Good. So what can we do to mess up his timing? Just be yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> As always. Wait, that's just what he wants us to do. Hey, <laughs> let's let's go kill Starstream right now. What? <laughs> <laughs> We're not ready. No, you're not shows ready. Up. All right, I finally caught up. Whew. What are we doing? We're going to kill Starstream. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> he runs off. You go on ahead. That'll take like if anything, that's that's going to be the thing that'll that'll make her bond with us. Unless a lot of glue is involved, I don't think she's going to bond. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, she bonded pretty well with the uh, <laughs> with the bus. Ten thousand six hundred sixty-five. Ten thousand six hundred sixty-six. 10,667. The endless stream of robotic sheep winds their way through your mind, Magnum. In a serpentine labyrinth of circuits and pathways, the electric ewes trudge onward, giving a disinterested hop as each of them pass you. Gloomy, dim, and lacking all color, the maze of passageways seems never-ending with only the long line of mechanized mutton to keep you company. <laughs> nice. Teenage Mutant Ninja <laughs> lands the secret of the ears. <laughs> <laughs> what wow. do you want to do, Magnum? <laughs> <sighs> so I'm just in this, this tunnel? Yep. You've been walking for a little while now. There's some twists and turns, but all that's present there is this long line of electric sheep. So they're, they're robot sheep, of course. Mm-hmm. Does he, does he walk like a Jibubnin from Starfinder? They're a, uh, they're a monopod. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We'll, we'll go with Someone Wait, won't, this, together. won't this mean that that you're actually an android? Because androids dream of electric sheep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need another brain. Yeah, Magnum, it's just a, a long, winding, twisting passageway and a line of sheep that you are following. So are they going down the passageway as the same direction? or uh, They're going the opposite direction from you. Oh, so I'm, I'm headed to the source of the sheep. Well, you're not a sheep. You don't follow the masses. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, sheeple. Uh, what, this is getting woolly. All right, I'll pick up the pace and try to find the source of the sheep, and I'll watch for any outlets or exits on the sides, too, to get off the path. So it is a, a true labyrinth, so there are side paths that you can travel down. Uh, they're all just leading into darkness. There is no light or no anything on uh, on any of these side paths. Uh, the only directional thing you have going is the direction of the sheep, but you are passing multiple paths, and you can choose to step off the path if you would choose to. I'm going to get lost almost immediately if I do that. All right, I'll, I'll mark some of the walls to make sure I'm not going in circles. But I'll keep going, keep keep swimming upstream. Do you mark them with circles? <laughs> that would be signaturally unhelpful. <laughs> Each one you pass does that little hop, and you hear and you hear the sheep itself is the one actually counting off. So oh. each one is counting off their own number. All oh, right. Well, if these guys, if these sheep are bit calling out their numbers, maybe they can talk. So I'll just sort of keep pace with, I'll go backwards and keep pace with one of them and uh, 
Say, uh, what you doing here? It does a little small hop. Looks at you, kind of cross-eyed. All it said was its number, though. Uh, damn it. And it seems the more that you pass, the less interested the hops are, so it looks like they're not even making any efforts anymore. Apathy. Come on. Have some enthusiasm. All right. All right, let's let's pick up the pace then. Head towards the head towards the entrance where these things are coming from. Takes you about another 10, 15 minutes, but you follow the line of sheep around a corner uh, and you can see a light source. And from that light source, you see a, all the sheep issuing forth and it looks like a space bridge. Oh, okay. Interesting. Is it like really bit like the same size usually or is it smaller? It's smaller. It's like a one person sized space bridge. Or space, space bridge portal. Footbridge. And you can see each sheep is hopping in. Ba 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 <sighs> And then you just shrink. Alright. As the sheep keep on coming through, uh, you start to hear kind of like the, the voices of a of a crowd, kind of like people talking. It's indistinct, you really can't make it out. It sounds like background chatter. And one of the sheep or one of the, the ewes, or whatever the singular version of a sheep is. It's a sheep. Looks at you, directly at your eyes, says Magnum. <sighs> the next one passes, looks at you, Magnum. Mag, 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 mag. The next one passes, same thing, Magnum. Mag, 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 mag. <laughs> what, what, what do you want? Magnum. Magnum. All right. Magnum. Oh, yes. <laughs> pull out my sidearm and I'm going to go through the space bridge. I didn't think they invented LSD here. <laughs> Magnum, go ahead and make me a fort save. No oh boy. Fortitude save. <laughs> 21. You pass through the space bridge, but instead of stepping out the other side like you would expect, you instead... Open your eyes to see a bunch of bots standing around you, none of which you recognize. <sighs> Off to the side, away from the, the crowd, you do recognize the form of Moonracer. You are lying on your back, and all around you, it looks like you are in a hospital or a clinic of some kind. And the bot standing above you is just saying, Magnum, Magnum. Magnum and kind of yes, like yes, yes. slapping you on the side of the head. Step out, stop, stop it. <laughs> what do you want? Oh, good, good. You're awake. We were. I don't know. We'll, we'll see about that. You st you started you started uh, making some odd noises like this this ba sound. <laughs> don't even mention it. How are, are you feeling? Just, what is just going? What on Cybertron's going on here, man? You're not on Cybertron. You're on Velocitron. Don't you remember? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> the the last thing you remember, Magnum, was combining into Alloy, and as you were hanging above Navitar's spark, uh, your, your foot kind of grazed the spark, the Titan's spark, and then you don't remember anything else. Well, it's more you were our foot, <clears throat> you know. <laughs> uh uh, how long has it been? <laughs> uh, it's only been, uh, well, since you were brought in, it, it's only been about an, an hour or two. Uh, and Moon Racer will will rush over. Magnum, Magnum, are you are you feeling all right? Is everything is everything okay? Are you? Do you remember who I am? Yes, yes, Moon Racer. Hello. What? what did, did, um, all right. Where's everybody else? What's going on? Some, something big was going down when I felt when I got knocked out. Uh, well, we we have some things to to catch you up on. Uh, but your friends had to to leave and head to the space bridge to uh, to Cybertron. Uh, they were concerned that uh, there was going to be an uh, assassination attempt. Uh, it looked like you were just in shock, so we they they unfortunately had to to leave you here for for a few while you recovered. Uh, it was. As you can imagine, they, they were concerned about about someone named Waveform. Oh yes, okay, yeah, makes sense. All right, all right, let me up. 
I'm getting up. Get up. Can I stand? Uh, yep, you can stand. The doctors will attempt to say, you should take it easy, you know, you should move around so fast. Uh, no, assassination must find sheep that are assassinating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where the hell do they go anyway? Anybody see my sweater? <laughs> this is made of steel wool. <laughs> Come on, Carapace, don't be abrasive. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, this this is so good. <laughs> you can see your pink trench coat on the the table on the <sighs> side over there. Thank goodness. I'll I'll light up a cigarette. You can hear the doctors like calling out to you as you're leaving. It, how is he smoking that? <laughs> we don't have lungs. <laughs> uh, well, but I'll I'll say thank you, doctors. I appreciate it. I just appreciate the help. I just need uh, urgency. You know. Damn it! Where is he? And yeah. You can get out of what looks to be a makeshift clinic on Velocitron. It is kind of chaotic around here. And based on, on what you remember from the from what happened when you inserted the spark into, into Navitas, it, it kind of makes sense. Uh, you, you, do rec- you do remember that Navitas was transforming before you got uh, shocked into unconsciousness, so... Is there a sky, or am I like, inside like metal caverns? You are deep within Navitas's body. All right. Damn it. Near the colon, we'll say. <laughs> um... I'll try to ask directions. Hello, has anyone seen a space bridge around here? Oh, the space bridge? Space bridge? Yeah, yeah, you got moved. You're going to head on down. Yeah, head on down. You're going to turn left, turn left, turn up, turn right, turn down, turn right, turn left, and you'll be good to go. No, no, no. You're not going to be able to do that way. You can't go left, right, left, 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 right, right, left. You're going to have to go left, right, left, right, right, left, left, right. Damn it, sweet spot. Get out of my head. <laughs> No, 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 don't worry. The, the, the colon is in a different part of the body right now. So it's, it's going to be left, left, right, right, up, down, left, right, right. Did you say no, col- no. colon? No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm totally wrong. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. A, B. I, I, B, I hope, a, you're, not, I B, hope a. you're talking about punctuation, right? How do you get started? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. I'll head Come on, everyone. Be a direction. voice in Magnum's head. It's fun. <laughs> I'll keep my eye close out, close watch for sheep and follow them if I find them. Not a problem. In fact, why don't we say that you see some ghostly sheep? Oh, yes. <laughs> bah. Better than gnomes. Is it really? Yeah, they, the, the gnomes are way too chatty. Magnum. I'll jump on top of one and ride it to the space bridge. Giddy up. So as you are as you're heading towards the space bridge, you take a look at your comm, uh, and there is a message from your friends, uh, just updating you on what they've been doing and where they're heading. Uh, so you got a, a message saying they had made it back to Cybertron, and uh, they have found out that Waveform and Lamplighter were heading towards Earth. Uh, so if you want to, you can take the space bridge from Velocitron directly to. Uh, the Earth Embassy, if you so choose. Hell oh, yes, that would be a good idea. Am I able to communicate? Am I out of range at this point? Uh, you can't communicate with them. They are way out of range. Um, but the, the message was effectively just like an email, a text sent to you. All right. Onward, Fuzzy. You make your way to the Space Bridge and get it set for Earth. And... Zoop. Yeah. Wasn't great last time I did this, so we'll see. Onward. You pop out of the space bridge on the Earth side into a uh, large room that has uh, a lot of people in it, uh, a lot of other bots in it. And it looks like uh, you have a bot that is uh, kind of just going through the the line of people coming in from the spaceport, or sorry, coming in from the space bridge, and there's uh, other bots that are questioning the people who are who are leaving. Uh, you've seen something like this before. It's clearly like a, like an immigration processing uh, room, and you are uh, you get queued up, and you are next in line. All right. 
State your name and reason for visit. Magnum. Justice. <laughs> Justice. Okay, it's going to be a write-in. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you intend to stay? As long as necessary. <laughs> Probably less than a week. <laughs> I'm just glad justice is a short-term stay. Swift. <laughs> and cold, turns out. <laughs> uh, uh, any illegal substances to declare? Uh, not that I know of, but I don't know what's illegal either, so... He points to a list, and it's all, like, acidic things and, like, radiation stuff. So if you have anything that could be uh, dangerous to humans, it would be on the list. Uh, no, I'll light up a cigarette and say, no, I don't have anything. He checks his notepad. Uh, I'm afraid cigarettes are banned. You'll have to smoke it right now or hand it over. Uh, Cybertron cigarettes, mm-hmm. specifically. Is it? They're not, but <laughs> Does there such a thing? <laughs> yeah, they're good for one puff. <laughs> All right, I choose to eat them now. Uh, last question: uh, Any weapons to declare? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll just show him. I mean, I have the, the hand cannon. There's nothing. I have nothing really spectacular. So. This was a ridiculous interaction for me. <laughs> uh, enjoy your stay here on Earth, Mr. Uh, uh, Magthagoras. Uh, Magthagoras. How'd that change? Move along. Damn, move could. along. All right. Yeah. <laughs> where's the... Where's the... Uh, damn it. Where's, where would I find Windblade? Windblade's a popular bot this day. Uh, she's hosting a party in Meeting Hall Alpha. If you call it up on the city map, it'll direct you there. All right. Thank you very much. Have a Primus blessed day. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do. Whatever. They'll get right, right outside the building and they'll, they'll, ow, they'll cough up the cigarettes. <laughs> Light one That's up and go find the map. <laughs> <laughs> Not usually. <laughs> Believe me, the alternative is much worse. <laughs> Full cavity search. Transform into a building. Take your time. <laughs> Please note the spacious ceilings. <laughs> I'm going to find that map. And uh, as far as I know, an assassination is going to happen. So I got to catch up as soon as I can. And actually, I, since I'm in on Earth, maybe the communicator will work. You want to give it a shot? Yep. Hey, uh, I'll just call everybody. Hey, do you guys can hear me? Hello? Ignore. <laughs> uh, uh, All of you that are in the party, your comms go off. Uh, and Carapace, this was just when your buddy there, Leatherback, uh, mentioned the, the his bounty for Swampstone. So you can... Uh, choice is yours. You can... You can Answer the calm, or you can start talking about uh, about uh, Swampstead leather back here. But I think it's clear which is more important. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give all of you the choice. What do you want to do? You want to answer Magnum? Uh, no, I'm 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 focusing on the Swampstone thing. No offense. No, oh, that's what I was hoping you would do. <laughs> all right. I, well, no one's answering me, so I'll head in the direction of wherever that is. Carapace is ignoring. Sweet Spot's ignoring. Uh, how about you, Wild Strike? Or are you preoccupied? Yeah, I'm trying to find that that sound. Mm, I'd probably right. turn the calm oh, down. Right. Because <laughs> I'm listening to find, find that rumble. Sorry, Magnum. They're ignoring you. <laughs> your communication goes unanswered. <laughs> All right, Magnum. Well, your com- comms are being ignored. This can be... That's bad. Um, so I will head to that building directly. Yep, uh, assume the worst. Is it walking distance? or Well, anywhere is walking distance, you have the time. But <laughs> Yeah, it, it takes a few to get over there, but if you're if you're hurrying, if you're really booking it to get there, you can you can get there in just a, a few minutes. Well, I'll, I'll ride Willie there, you know. And the map has provided uh, like an, an heads-up display as to what direction you need to take to get there, so there you go. I'm still tripping, apparently. <laughs> Onward. 
Sweet Spot, you are meandering through this party, mingling with the other guests. Uh, you got some humans up there to the, the northwest of you. Don't forget they are behind the uh, the line that says do not approach unless called for. Uh, there's no one directly around you that you uh, that you really know. I'm sure you recognize them, but, you know, no one that you've interacted with. Uh, and, of course, Prime and Windblade along with Legionnaire, Longtooth, Lamplighter, Waveform and 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 circuit are in the big cluster behind you what would you like to do these folks over here that I gravitated to uh who are they you don't really yeah you don't really know who they are you don't recognize them they seem like some party guests uh, maybe some junior politicians uh, no one famous enough to be recognized at first glance all right, well then, I will saunter my way over here. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me. Kind of going through, and then I'll turn around and say, See, you look familiar. What's your name? And I'll just start uh, kind of conversing with each of these guys here, engaging them in conversation, and getting to know their names while I'm also kind of watching the larger group over here. Okay. Uh, the first one is this guy over here on the left. His name is Skidmark. And the one on the right is named Hot Seat. So, you, are you two a thing? I'm sorry, what do you mean? We're there. We're standing there together. I wasn't sure if you were a uh, couple of souls or anything like that. No, not at all. We're just friends. Okay. And how about make yourself? A, hold on, make a quick sense motive check on that. Oh, Really? Have I stumbled upon something? All right, uh, so that would be a uh, roll on the dice of uh, seven, which uh, makes my total check a 27. That's right, 27. These two, they're giving eyes to each other. There's something going on between these two. Aww. All right, well, they can deny it to themselves all they want, but I know the truth now. Yeah, you know there's something going on there. Love finds a way. Uh, 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 life finds a way. And how about yourself? What, uh, what's your name? What do you do? Uh, just so you know, because you used a, an interesting phrase. Uh, when I was in Croatia, in the Zagreb, there was a, a museum of broken relationships. And wow. the Wi-Fi password while you were there was just friends with a space between it, like there should be. You know? <laughs> really? Yes. That's like, awesome. They embraced the shit out of it. It was amazing. So. Oh, me, me, my name, my name, my name is Dogfight. Dogfight. I turn into a jet. Can, can you, can you, see, can you tell? I turn into a jet. Isn't that amazing? Dog. Well, you know, there, there were some, uh, some wing bits over there and some uh, tail, tail fins right down there. So, I had assumed. But I didn't want to just come right out and say it. You know, uh, one of my very good friends, is Jet. I, I do admire the Jets. I myself am a, am a racer. I do like uh, the ground sports and such. Ah, you should get a third mode. Flying is where it's at. Take a look at these wings. And you can tell, like, he's, he's pointing to his wings. His wings are striped red, whereas the rest of him is like a dark blue. So he's calling a lot of attention to those wings. Yep. Uh, I will let him continue on about himself and his wings for a while, uh, as I wanted him to, so that I can uh, concentrate on the large group of more important people in the center of the room. And he will continue on talking for a long time, because he is he's Ooh, really okay. happy to be talking about that. <laughs> That's very interesting. Could you tell me more? I've, I've never had someone so much interested in, in, in jet design before. And he goes into this, like, this really kind of long, like, diatribe about how Skip he is. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're Since you're only half paying attention to him, you get the, you get a couple of basic facts. One, he is an alt mode designer and he loves jets. Wow. That's an interesting job. Yeah. I, I would expect him to be sort of like a biplane or something like that with that name. You never know. This By the my, way, Pat. This is, my par- this is my partner, Red Baron, and... <laughs> <laughs> Stop with. 
Love oh, it. Oh, I love your pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, sweet spot. You will you'll talk to to dogfight. Uh, you attempt to to engage like Skidmark and and Hot Seat in with that as well, but. Uh, it seems like they were talking to Dogfight, and they're using you as a way to get away from him. <laughs> so, <laughs> real question is: Does Adam need to be afraid of this guy because he's dog in his name? <laughs> of course, I do. He's going to find out that I've only been half listening to him. So, yeah, he's going to come after me. That's a given. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you want to do while uh, while this is going on? Because, like I said, he'll he'll talk your your ear off for a while. Keeping myself at at, at ready to action, you know, ready to pounce, ready to jump. Okay, Wild Strike, you are in between uh, Carapace and this uh, group of Prime and Windblade and the reporters. Windblade had already passed you and just said, "Like, hi, Wild Strike, how you doing?" Well, just greeted you. She didn't, she didn't ask how you were doing. <laughs> Yeah, I... I'm trying to remember. We have waveform. Yeah, those two up there. I think I was running distraction. Yeah, you were blocking like, that. Prevent the, the, them, the microphone. yeah. Yeah. And you were doing a pretty good job for it as well. And now that Windblade is aware of the situation, she's participating in it as well. So okay. she's using Prime and Circuit and all the rest to kind of act as a buffer zone. So yep. this whole group, like, very slowly kind of turns, like some weird kind of dance, as it's <laughs> all circling around Prime and Windblade. Uh, so she is successfully managing to keep Waveform and Lamplighter on the opposite side from uh, from her. Uh, from her. So she's keeping Prime and some other reporters between them. Nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll maintain position on this side here so I can help with that as well. Okay. And I'm still trying to figure out where that damn sound's coming from. Okay, give me one more perception check while you're while you're doing all that. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna have I have Nyko assist. Nyko, take a listen. Tell me if you can hear that rumbling sound. A rumbling sound, boss? Yeah. You know what? Let me uh, let me climb on top there, and he'll he'll climb up your side and stand on your shoulders. Nice. Uh, I should have had him do it. Uh, so with his help, it'd be a 20. <laughs> it's still hard to track down, but you are thinking you're making some progress here. It seems a bit louder to Nyko than it does to you, which seems to indicate it's more above you. Oh. Okay. Last time, you kind of got the sense that it was coming from, like, in between, like, the cracks, kind of like, like the cracks of the floors or, like, the separations in the floor plates. And now that you're yeah. thinking about it more, it's like, that doesn't make any sense. How would the sound be able to do that? And and since Nyko is hearing it a little bit clearer than you, it looks like it might be at a, a higher level above you somewhere. Look, boss, the sands. <laughs> yeah, are there multiple floors here? So not to the, the room itself, the stairs that you see off to the, the left. Uh, it looks like a, like a grand procession kind of staircase. So okay. it leads upwards and out to a, another like another space. But it doesn't look like anything is ha- really happening in that space. Like the doors up there are closed. They're just, it looks like it's like people would come in that way. Like you would expect if they were holding like some some big like, like talk or something like that, maybe the VIPs would come in from that direction. Okay. Guys, I think that rumbling sound's coming from above us. I'm going to go check it out. I'm going to head outside and see if I can see if there's anything, like, on the roof or something. Actually, I'll save you the, uh, I'll save the trouble a little bit, because uh, now that you are looking upwards, uh, you can notice that there are some, some vents off uh, on the ceiling, like, on the sides, like, uh, right up next to the ceiling, right, right under it, on the sides of the walls. Uh, and go ahead and make a, a culture check. 19. Uh, I'm sure that at some point, maybe Magnum or, uh, has either told you this or you had kind of overheard what uh, what has to happen in, in environments like this with biological life. Uh, airflow is important. So having fresh air come into a space is, is necessary for biological life forms. Uh, so you're thinking that these vents appear, are these like, these vents are part of some sort of uh, some sort of like airflow system. Okay. Those are the only things 
above you that really stand out. The rest of the, the ceiling and the upper parts of the walls do feel solid. Hey, boss, did you, uh, are you seeing those things, those, uh, those holes up there? Yeah, vents, I think they are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, back on Scarvix for the, oh, look, the biological life, like, they needed the airflow to, to be able to, to pass through. Like, if, if the air turned, uh, turned bad, like, if it turned toxic, like, they'd just die, like, they'd get sick and die. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Huh. That is weird. So, is that rumbling just the airflow? Hmm. It's a good question. I I don't think so, there, boss. I, I've heard I've heard like the the, uh, the the machinery that has to to keep the air running through there, and it can get kind of loud sometimes. But it does it doesn't sound the same way. It's more like a whooshing, like a like a uh, like the kind of sound you hear when you're flying through the air. More like a that kind of sound, rather than this kind of like like a like a swarmy kind of like a, like like a do 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 kind of sound, like a rumbling thing. You get me? I get you. All right. All right, let's go check it out then. Uh, you can, uh, if you go up to the top of the stairs to that uh, landing up there, uh, yep. there is a there is one vent that is close enough where you think that uh, if you hold Nico up to it, uh, you might be able to see in it and investigate. Okay, I will do that. All right, you'll head over there. Uh, Carapace, Leatherback just dropped a bomb on you. Okay. Um... I mean, I'm going to laugh at first. Because they're saying, wait, Swapstone? Someone's got you chasing after Swapstone? Okay. Good luck with that. Hey, it's an official bounty here, Tiny. Go ahead and make a quick sense motive on that one. Uh, Just a quick sense motive between friends. Uh, that is a 10. All right, not quite enough to, to, to get this. You can tell that his expression did change when you said that, though. It, it almost seems like he got a little angry, but, you know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bounty here, Tiny. If someone's going to pay me to get Swampstone, then I'll find Swampstone. And you know what? Hey, hey, come over here. He kind of like leans in close to you, kind of like conspiratorially. It's like, I got me some solid leads. How much is this one? This is a big one. 100,000 Shanix bounty. It's respectful. Someone really wants this guy. Well, thinks he wants this guy. Who knows? Right. Only a crazy person goes looking for Swampstone. Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck with that. Ah, I don't need any luck. I'll have this wrapped up in two days, tops. How long would it take you? Five, six days, a week? I'm going to, like, kind of tap him on the shoulder. I'm like, whatever you need to tell yourself. And I'm going to place a tracker on him. <laughs> Ooh. Ah, <laughs> uh, I want you to roll something for that. Sleight of hand? Yeah, that sounds about right. I'm actually good. Ooh, nat 20. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> so that is a 26. That is good. You managed to get that tracker just lodged just a little bit, like, under the skin of his, his uh, crocodile mode. Doesn't yeah. notice a thing. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm gonna have to thank uh, thank Pythagoras for getting us those uh, small ones. Okay. Um, Where would so, you like to head from here? Yeah, I mean, my my intention is actually to stay right where I am and just completely ignore him. You know, so I'll be looking around the room, just not looking at him. Like, do I do I see what everyone else is doing? Yeah, if you want to go ahead and make a one more perception check, just because there was some some things that you had missed uh, on the first try. So that is a twenty-three, and oh, at this point, like now that I'm not, you know, listening to Jackass, I'll reach out the comms to Magnum to see what he was talking about. Uh, let's see. You noticed uh, Leatherback and Air Arachnid before, uh, so we'll skip over those two. Uh, you can see the whole kind of do -si do thing going on with the, the crowd in the middle. So Windblade, Prime, and everyone kind of... You, you can you can tell what's happening here, that Windblade's keeping Prime between uh, uh, her and potential assassins. Uh, you can definitely see that Sweet Spot has moved over and is talking to some rando politician. Uh, you 
do spot uh, Knockout on the opposite side of Leatherback. You remember Knockout. He was one of the uh, the, the representatives of Velocitron, uh, the actual representatives to the Council of Worlds. So okay. he is there. Am I seeing any murderous intent elsewhere in the room? Like someone who's not quite, like, you know, someone who's obvious... No, nothing is nothing is jumping out at you on that one. Okay. Uh, you do see Wildstrike uh, heading up the stairs to that platform uh, above, and we'll say that uh, we'll say yeah. So you uh, get on comms to to Pythagoras or to, to Magnum. Magnum, the co- your comm goes off. Hello, hello. Who's there? Hey, are you still with us? Oh yes, definitely. Damn it! Hi ho, Willie. Yes, excuse me. Whatever. I'm so sorry I'm behind. <laughs> but uh, I woke up and I figured I'd join you. You guys are trying to prevent an assassination, I assume. That's what you said. Uh, yeah, though there are plenty of people here that are worth killing, so. Oh, dear. Right. <laughs> Is everything all right? Because I, I called and no one answered, so. I think I just been in the middle of something. Or what's the situation? Give me the rundown. Uh, everyone else is kind of, you know, doing the things that they do. Like, no one's in danger that that I'm aware of. Uh, I'll tell you about the other stuff later on, I think. Yep, no problem. I'm headed in. Any advice? Should I just come in? Definitely tip the coat check person. Oh, yes. Thank you. Good thinking. All right. I will barge into the party. Oh, not barge. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> You slam the, the doors, doors open. Everyone looks at you. <laughs> so I guess I'll give the coat check bot, you know, like five Shannix and I don't know, that's, that's I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, what's this money? <laughs> oh wow, this one really heavy. Th- thank you. Oh, are they this- humans? <laughs> <laughs> thank staff. you for this tent. <laughs> <laughs> well, either they're humans or why would they have a coat check person at all? I know. They I'm must be humans. Joking. Well, they probably are humans, because only the humans would have coats. As you look to the right-hand side, you notice a little small booth down by your down by your knee. Uh, it's a little stand, and there's a bunch of like little tiny coats hanging on the rack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I suppose I should, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to give this to you. So I guess I'll just leave it out here. Uh, um, you can hang it up at your leisure. And I'll wedge a few coins into the, like the, the little t- on the table. Um, you put the, you drop the coat and it just covers like the entire coat check room. Oh, <laughs> dude, sorry. Uh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll dig them out. I don't want to kill anyone. Well, it's a good thing your coat got cleaned because I mean you were just suffocated from asphyxiation from the smoke at that point. <laughs> I know it's like pristine pink now, man. <laughs> it was probably always that color. You know, it's just the cigarette smoke changed it <laughs> oh that, yeah that's, that's what it was I thought, we, I thought you knew that uh, I thought it got dyed on the way to the space bridge or something like that. I, forget the re- <laughs> I forget the reason we ended up having it pink but it's canon now so you head on into the party where would you like to go alright well I'm gonna stop I don't wanna I don't wanna be too disruptive right off the bat <laughs> too late for that <laughs> go ahead and give me a perception check as you're heading in you're gonna like shoot the ceiling big. Like, this is a stick up. I mean, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> Thirty-four perception. Uh, well, you can see what's going on in the middle of the room with Prime, Windblade, and uh, the reporters. You can see this kind of big, rotating clump of people. You can see Carapace uh, next to this big crocodile bot over on the southern side of the room. You notice uh, three spidery looking bots on the northern side. <laughs> uh, you can see Sweet Spot heading towards the, uh, or in the, sort of in the back of the room. You see Wild Strike heading up the stairs towards the, the back as well. You notice Knockout over next to the crocodile bot that Carapace is near. You also notice on the other side of the guard near the doors, Hardtop is sitting at one of the tables. Uh, remind me, Hardtop. Is he the, the, the slumlord? No, he's the uh, the guy who had a bounty on you who oh, wanted right. to bring you to Scarfix. Well, we have we got guy. his money, so he should be happy now. Yep. Is that a giant transformer-sized piano? Yes. It is. <laughs> 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 
Magnum steps in the door. Dun dun. <laughs> Piano stops for a second. So I get a lay of the land. So I know where all, all my pals are. Well, could I do a PI check to see, like, is is Windblade in, in sort of a, a reasonably safe position where she is? And I also want to check to see if there's any higher up entrances, like sort of like convenient sniper spots. Quick around. read of the room. All right, go ahead and do your your profession check there. Can I uh, aid him by pointing out noteworthy things nonchalantly? No, I think you are... I, I think all of you are kind of in, like, your own individual spots at this point. Uh, and Dogfight is really, like, is really keeping your... It's, it's just really talking to you uh, quite a lot. It's not like we're communicating anyway. So. All right, 39. As if I could have helped. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can see what's going on with uh, with Windblade. She is using uh, Circuit and Legionnaire as a eff- effectively as a wall between Waveform and Lamplighter, and you can see uh, both of those on the outside part of this group as this whole mess is turning around. So yeah, she is. She looks to be in a fairly safe place right now. As long as, like, Waveform or Lamplighter don't get around them, which it doesn't look like she's allowing it. Assuming the attack uh, so, comes from them. Correct. And you probably... I imagine you don't think that uh, that Waveform and Lamplighter will try to do an attack through Prime. Probably poor form. I, I would enjoy that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> as he beats the living hell out of them. <laughs> You would imagine that if they were going to do to do that, they would have to 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 get away from from this. You think that at, in the current situation, an attack on Windblade is not is not an att- not tenable. Yeah, I mean it's not the best time anyway. I mean really, but yeah, okay. And they're in here, so they're probably not going to blow up the place. But I'm going to do I'm going to do a any high spots where snipers could be hiding. Hiding, mm, I'm gonna say no on that one. There's no. There like, is a balcony. Or... There's a like a landing slash balcony where Wild Strike is at the moment, and although there is a solid railing in front of it, uh, Wild Strike is standing in there. So if there's a sniper there, he would see it. Okay, good. And there's no other places that there's no like higher up balconies on the sides or anything like that. Nope. So it's like sort of like a ballroom sort of thing. Yeah, that's the vibe you're you're getting. And I will try to be surreptitiously pull out my chem chem detector and do a scan for that com- explosive substance. Oh, okay. Uh, do you are you trying to do this like subtly? Are you subtly, trying to keep it hidden? Yeah. I mean, once I scan, I should be able to stop scanning. So. All right. Then at that point, I'm going to I I know that the two villains we know about are under observation. And I'll keep them under observation, but I do want to pay, pay attention to other people too because there could always be something unexpected. And I'm, I'm assuming the scan doesn't come up with anything. So I want you to make a slight hand check to, to keep it subtle, to keep it so it's not noticed. 13. Mm, not so great. <laughs> not so great. <laughs> subtle, I mean, the subtlety isn't really my thing. <laughs> You pull your chem detector. It, you kind of fumble it for a moment before you get it hidden underneath your coat. I don't have a coat. So you, that's right. You don't. <laughs> it's probably I probably I try to hide it under the coat and it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh shit, I don't have a coat. <laughs> you successfully hide it under your coat. How? <laughs> it's in the other room. <laughs> you turn it on and it does a scan. It's a little bit on the loud side. You know, you're not drawing too much attention, but you you think that couple of people have noticed the beeps and the bloops and you get a hit you get a match for the uh the residue for the infernus bullet let me guess no i won't guess where is it it is about about 50 feet to your west which puts it right in that big pile of people yeah. i would say that's a little more evidence right there so, Carapace, you are uh, keeping an eye on the pile of people in the middle, specifically ignoring Leatherback, correct? Yes. And Sweet Spot, uh, you are going to 
What are you gonna try to do? You gonna head towards like the humans or something? What are you gonna try to do? Because dogfight is still talking your ear off. Yeah, I'm gonna edge my way toward the humans uh, since uh, you know wild strikes said the noise to come from above. I'm afraid there might be some construction that that could really harm these little squishies. So I want to be ready okay. to react to anything that needs doing. And uh, oh, oh, look at that! He's following. Me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. You know what? I, you know what I'm really interested in? Weaponized. All forms. Have you done any work there? And weapons. Oh, oh yeah, yes, 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 yes. Absolutely, it is one of my most favorite topics. And you just kind of tune him out after that. <laughs> but yes, as you noted, dogfight does uh, does keep pace with you and follows you to be next to the, the human section. Look what I did. <laughs> <laughs> Wild Strike, you get up to the the top of the stairs and this uh, this little landing. Uh, you take a quick look around, and there is a set of double doors off to your west that are closed. And like I said before, it looks like a uh, just kind of like a like a prep chamber, you know, some some place for for people to to kind of get ready before they come out uh, into the, this kind of larger meeting space, this larger like ballroom kind of space. Uh, it could be like a, just like a VIP room or something like that. You you can't, it's, the windows are tinted. You can't see inside, but it doesn't look like the doors were opened at all today. They looked like they were, they were closed. Okay. Uh, no guards or anything up there. The, the, the guards that you remember from uh, last time are uh, at this point below you now. So mm-hmm. they're there. And that vent is, that you can reach is above you. Hey, hey, hey boss, lift me up here. Toss me up on your, uh, lift me up all the way. All right, take a look. Tell me if you see anything. And you lift up Nyko as high as you can. Uh, he is just barely uh, tall enough, or just barely high enough to get his his view into the vent. When you lift him up there, so you lift Nyko right up to the vent. He pokes his his head right in. And almost the second you do that, he shrieks, jumps back, and jumps down from from your hands. Boss, we got incoming! And a pile of shark decons issues forth from the vent. Not just from that one, but from the other vents around the room. And you see shark decons dropping from the vents on the ceilings. Roll for initiative next time. Oh, Oh, I cannot wait. This is (laughs) time. Thank you. This is my kind of party. (laughs) From the secret files of Teletran 1, Empire of Rust is written and GM'd by Michael Ordway. Headmaster Magnum and his partner Pythagoras are played by Matthew G. Candidate Sweet Spot representative of Velocitron is played by Adam H.U. The Decepticon warrior Wildstrike and his partner Nyko are played by Mike M. And Carapace, the beast soldier of Primitive Eucharist, is played by Patrick Finn. Additional characters are played by Michael and Cassandra Ordway. Empire of Rust is supported by the humans and networks of planet Earth, whose online networks provide access to libraries of sound effects and music such as Storyblocks, Zasplat, Blue Zone, and Dark Fantasy Studios. We are distributed by the Transmissions Podcast Network. Stay up to date with all the latest news and reviews in the world of the Transformers by going to transmissionspodcast.com or searching for the Transmissions in your podcast app of choice. You can communicate with the heroes of Iacon by joining us on the Transmissions Discord channel. There you can discuss episodes talk to the cast, and download the rule set used in the Empire of Rust. Teletran 1, signing off.